Welcome to the life of a tardigrade. Measuring a measly 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters, these invertebrate microanimals pack some mighty superpowers. Found between blades of moss, frozen arctic ice, deep in the ocean, and high up on mountains, tardigrades can withstand almost anything mother nature throws at them. These critters are even resilient to the vacuum and oppressive radiation of outer space. They can survive these harsh environments because of their ability to enter cryptobiosis, a state in which their cells form protective outer layers and all measurable metabolic processes stop. This transformation is amazing, and there are multiple research teams currently exploring how it works. Some scientists think we can adopt it for various purposes in humans through genetic modification. Fascinated with these adorable little creatures and increasingly aware of their potential role in future space exploration, we decided they deserved a video. But first up, how do you find a water bear? Hi, I'm Avik Wadavkar from Essence of Reality, another YouTube science channel. Now, here's what you're going to need to find and capture these tardigrades. First, a paper bag or envelope. Preferably, don't use plastic because it encourages mold to grow and retains water. Second, you're going to need two or three petri dishes to keep your pet tardigrades in. And now, if you don't have petri dishes, any clear disinfected plastic container will work. You're also going to need a microscope to see your tardigrades. And if you, like most of us, do not have a microscope, especially in these times, then there are amateur ones for recreational use available for relatively cheap prices online. And finally, you're going to need a decent amount of patience. Now step one is finding a water bear. Tardigrades are most abundantly found in wet moss, lichen, or even leaf litter. Look for damp places in forests, around ponds, or even in your own backyard. Now step two is in the petri dish. After collecting samples from your chosen place, put some of the sample in each petri dish. Again, if you don't have a dish, any transparent plastic disinfected container will work. Now steep the piece in one centimeter of water, preferably distilled water. Soak it for 24 hours at room temperature so any tardigrades in a cryptobiotic state have a chance to come out. Finally, squeeze the water from your moss into a second petri dish. Now step three is inspecting your tardigrades. Use a microscope with 15 to 30 times magnification to try and find your tardigrades. It's useful to have a backlight or side light to highlight these water bears. Look for something that looks like this floating around. Four pairs of legs with something in the back pair looking like a tail. The tardigrade shows something akin to a piece of shirt. If you find one, well, congratulations. But if not, well, you have to keep on looking. So you might be wondering, what do tardigrades have to do with space? Well, tardigrades became briefly famous in the summer of 2019 after a spacecraft crash landed on the surface of the moon, dumping its contents, including tardigrades in their cryptobiotic state, onto the region. Given their extreme resilience, many half joked, half wondered whether we'd accidentally populated the moon with terrestrial life. In a recent study, Scientists at the University of California, San Diego, investigated a damage suppression protein known as DSUP, known to protect tardigrades from extreme conditions. Researcher James Kadonaga of the experiment reported, We now have a molecular explanation for how DSUP protects cells from X-ray irradiation. We see that it has two parts, one piece that binds to chromatin, and the rest of it, forming a kind of cloud that protects the DNA from hydroxyl radicals. But protection from radiation was not this protein's original purpose. Rather, it served as shielding from the abundant hydroxyl radicals 
present in tardigrades' mossy habitat. Believe it or not, tardigrades have yet another incredible adaptation. According to this PBS article, water bears use a protein called CAHS that creates a 3D network to protect tardigrades' other proteins from unfolding and combining with each other, a process that can lead to cell death. The team responsible for this discovery hopes to use it in a variety of protein-sensitive applications. For example, they could completely replace the expensive and energy-draining refrigerators necessary to keep vaccines and blood banks viable, increasing accessibility to essential medical supplies for a fraction of the price. What we're describing here pertains to a fascinating subject called biomimicry copying brilliant ideas in nature for human technologies. Scientists today are wondering, could the implementation of protection proteins in humans eventually enable resistance to harmful space radiation, letting us live longer and easier in space? Could we capture the life-prolonging effects of the CAHS proteins too? Could we enter cryptobiosis for decades of space travel? only to arrive young and rejuvenated in a foreign paradise? Sound too good to be true? Investigation into the wonders of tardigrades is still young, and an exciting journey lies ahead. So whether you think they're cute or they're ugly, whether they excite you or terrify you, one thing is for certain, tardigrades' future impact on science will be monumental. Thank you.